So there's some more information we need to fill in in terms of the structure of Ig molecules found on the surface of B cells. So if I drew a B cell that looks like this, hopefully you would understand what I'm drawing, that those Y-shaped molecules are in fact the heavy and light chain proteins that are assembling into immunoglobulins bound to the surface of B cells. So if we drew it in a little more detail, it might look like this. So those would be the heavy chain proteins with their variable region uh, in, shown in black there. And again, you can have different heavy chain constant regions. So the purple ones might be coded from constant mu, and that would give you IgM. The um, orange ones would be coded from constant delta, and that would give you IgD, but they all have the same variable region because they use the same VDJ region. So really, you've got heavy chain protein, you've got light chain protein with the um, con with its constant region shown in blue, with its variable region shown in red. Right? So really, that's what you find on the surface of B cells. There's something else that's present bound to these proteins that I have left out in all the videos because uh, it's a little confusing and we don't really use them, find out what their function is until later when we talk about B-cell activation. So these molecules here, right, those are the Ig molecules. So there's IgM, there's IgD, there's IgA, IgE, IgG, uh, right? And so those are two heavy chain and two light chain proteins and you find these embedded in the surface of B-cells. There are two other proteins that are also associated with the heavy chain protein. So I'm going to draw them in here <clears throat> and the reason I didn't introduce them before is because then A, their names are confusing, and B, we don't really find out their function until we talk about B cell activation. We haven't gotten to B cell activation yet. So these two small membrane bound uh, light blue proteins are called Ig alpha and Ig beta. I know that's a really confusing name because you think, wait a minute, is that IgB or IgA? It is not. These are two small proteins known as Ig beta and Ig alpha, and they associate with the heavy chain uh, protein in the plasma membrane right there. So their function is going to be used later when we're talking about B cell activation. When a naive B cell becomes activated, these proteins uh, get modified uh, by phosphorylation. We'll see that later. But I need to introduce them now because every time we draw an Ig molecule in the plasma membrane of a B cell, we really should draw the Ig alpha and the Ig beta proteins along with it. Because this whole molecule here is called the B cell receptor. So B cells have receptors on the surface, and this is what the B cell receptor is made of. Two heavy chain proteins, two light chain proteins, Ig alpha and Ig beta. So that's a B cell receptor. And anytime you see a immunoglobulin molecule on the surface of a B cell, there's also the Ig alpha and the Ig beta molecules with them as well. So if we drew another B cell, and for example, let's say this one has switched, so it's got IgA on its surface. So it's undergone isotype switching. Uh, so it switched from using the constant uh, mu and the constant delta. Now it uses the constant alpha to code for its heavy chain region. So there's the constant alpha um, heavy chain domain. So if these are IgA molecules all on the surface of the cell, again, you're still going to have these two small proteins, Ig alpha and Ig beta, interacting with the um, heavy chain protein. Again, the function of these are going to be come up later when we talk about B cell activation. But just for now, uh, just realize when we talk actually about the B cell receptor found on the surface of B cells that are going to bind antigen, the B cell receptor actually consists of one, two, three, four, six proteins, two heavy chain, two light chain, and the alpha and the beta Ig.